You got yourself in some trouble uh, online because you're always stirring up trouble online. Oh, reacting I'm such to a troublemaker. You are a troublemaker. Reacting to a June 2021 clip, but it was making the rounds on X, of the CEO of United Airlines, Scott Kirby, talking about their their quotas over at United for yes. you know diversity in the ranks of pilots, which is extremely controversial for obvious reasons. Here's the clip that you were reacting to in South 13. Military. How is diversity and diversity targets working into the Aviate Academy? We have committed that 50% of the class of, of the classes will be women or people of color. Uh, today, only 19% of our pilots at United Airlines are women or people of color. And by the way, from all the data I've seen, that's the highest of any airline in the country. White males don't just dominate in the cockpits, also in the C-suite at United Airlines. Well, look, at United, I'm proud of the diversity that we actually have in our, our C-suite. I think if you look around corporate America. Correct me if I'm saying though, so I, this was just based off your website, the people you list as executives, but out of 11 people, three are women. I believe one is a person of color. Um, that's correct. Um, but, oh you know, in corporate America, I think, you know. That's a low bar. How do you yeah. raise your own bar? Well, a lot of this is, you know, focusing on it. We have uh, <laughs> programs to, one of the things we do is uh. for every job when we do an interview, we require women and people of color to be involved in, in the interview process. Shut up. Oh, I'm sick of this nonsense. <laughs> it's, so, it's so repulsive. All right, so wait, let me, uh, let me finish so yeah. it by your, your reaction to it. And people freaked out because you said the thing that you're not supposed to say, but that's what you're known for. Here he is in SOT 14 on Charlie's show. And that's why I think this United story and the DEI story yes. hits so hard because we've all been in the back of a plane when the turbulence hits or when you're flying through a storm and you're like, I'm so glad I saw the guy with the right stuff and the square jaw get into the cockpit before we took off. And I feel better now thinking about that. No, I mean, like, that. you want to go thought crime? Like, I'm sorry, if I see a black pilot, I'm going to be like, boy, I hope he's qualified. Well, well, that's the you game wouldn't have done that. You wouldn't have. You no, wouldn't have done that not, before. That's not an immediate. No, you wouldn't that's have done not that before. Who I am? That's no. not what I believe. It is the reality the left has but created. I, I, I'm, I like I, the meltdown after this with people like, <gasps> <laughs> and the response, the proper response was from you, from people like Matt Walsh. This is the world you people have created. You have that's created right. this world yes. where you make somebody's skin color the sole criterion for hiring. And then you react in horror when people wonder whether the qualifications are also there. How, the, the nerve to that's, get so indignant right. about your reaction to that. This is their world. You're just living in it. Yes, and I, I want to just reiterate the essence of that clip that was m missed by almost everybody. Jordan Peterson, to his credit, really picked up on it, which is what I was trying to be, you know, very vulnerable with the audience is that DEI invites unwholesome thinking. And I said, I don't, and I was saying in the clip, that's not who I am. That's not what I believe. But what it does is it makes us worse versions of, of ourselves, Megan. That's the whole point of what I was saying is that I now look at everything through a hyper-racialized diversity quota lens because of their massive insistence to try to hit these ridiculous racial hiring quotas. Of course, I believe anybody of any skin color can become a qualified pilot. That has never been my contention. I mean, it's silly. That's, it's, it's bigoted to think otherwise, right? What I was saying, though, is when you currently have it, it, it less like three to four percent of current pilots are blacks right now three to four percent and now, now they want to say this is just a hiring class of candidates are there enough candidates to fill the 50 percent quota and the other question should be asked is why is it a problem let's just ask the premise why is it a problem that 81 percent are white and i just i love right. the axios guy well wh white males are dominating the cockpit yeah, those pesky safe flights are dominating our society, Megan. <laughs> you know, all those, you know, all those it's 25 true. years of com commercial airliners that have kept on, I mean, dominating as, as if like the white male is like oppressing us with, you know, their beautiful landings through yeah. turbulence <laughs> and storms. And I just, I, I just, 
as if it's some some sort like we literally he said the axios well white males uh, dominate in the cockpit good in the sense of like it's been safe it's worked I don't care about the race I literally don't care but like the premise is as if there's some sort of massive oppression enterprise going on and so I just I want to make sure this is clear because the 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 deeper point even got cut off in that clip and that's fine is that DEI creates like bad people. And that's no, you're that, right. we walk around asking questions that we otherwise wouldn't ask. You're and right. I happen to say the quiet part out loud because I don't like thinking that way. I feel dirty. I feel like sinful. I feel that I'm now asking questions I wouldn't otherwise ask, but they've invited this entire conversation. And by the way, I just want to make this clear because then some people say, but Charlie, they're totally qualified. Hold on. Every analysis that we have of similar quota based affirmative action programs always results in the lowering of standards, whether it be Harvard, whether it be in federal hiring practices. Oh, at Harvard, admission standards were lowered 20 to 30 percent for black students versus Asian and white counterparts. So you can have one or the other. You can have excellence or you can have diversity. And I, for one, someone who has flown millions of miles and over 3,000 days of travel in the last decade, I want excellence in air travel. I don't care about the surgeon. skin color of the person. It's yes, just shame. exactly. I'm sorry. And by just, the way, these that, are this not is happening places. in medicine too, though. This is yeah, happening no, no, in medicine. These are not appropriate and, places for quotas or a, a hyper focus on diversity. They're just not. Like the people yes. have to have confidence that everybody gets into that cockpit or into that OR based on one thing, and that is merit. That's it. Like the, they deserve to be there. I want to end it with this. Um, Eli Steele, who I love, he's Shelby Steele's son and he's brilliant. He's a great social commentator. For the record, he's a person of color. He's a black man, mixed race, I think, in any event, whatever. He says, um, in response to this, Charlie, he tweeted out, what do you think Thomas Sowell and Shelby Steele have been warning us about for years? We cannot embrace the double-edged sword of racial preferences and its lure of an advantage without being stigmatized as inferior. It's the devil's bargain. It's too easy to point Mm. the finger at Charlie Kirk and slam him for racism. It it solves nothing. And it makes racism the problem when the left's systemic deployment of racial preferences is the true culprit. This system benefits the corrupted racial essentialists like Claudine Gay at the expense of the aspirational. The sad reality is that the aspirational among us do not need these advantages. We do not need the man to help us. Our people didn't survive slavery for this. And we should honor our ancestors through our untainted achievements. We all know the value of a good night's sleep. You feel better, you look better, you have more energy. The list is endless. Yet getting better sleep is a tough resolution to follow through on. It can seem sometimes like a lost cause. You're too hot, you're too cold. You don't know what's wrong, but you're not sleeping well. But now there's cozy earth. Cozy Earth has the softest, most luxurious, and responsibly sourced bedding on the planet. And because their bedding is made with premium viscose from highly sustainable bamboo, it's naturally temperature regulating, so you sleep comfortably year-round. As one customer put it, buy these sheets. The difference in my sleep was immediate and worth every penny. I couldn't agree more. Experience life-changing luxury with Cozy Earth's bedding, bath, and apparel products, all backed by a 100-night sleep trial as well as a 10-year warranty. Visit CozyEarth.com for details. Right now, you can save up to 35% off. CozyEarth.com. Go there now. Enter my promo code MEGAN at checkout for up to 35% off your first order. Okay, CozyEarth.com. Promo code MEGAN to get 35% off. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.